Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. And thank you also for the uh, points raised by all the distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, I don't intend to answer one by one of the, the question raised by, uh, in particular, Dr. Farouk, as well as uh, uh, my learned friend, uh, Sir Shah, 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 Shah. Huh? Uh, Dr. Farouk uh, highlighted that past want to silence the dissidents. Let me <coughs> state it clearly here. Uh, we are not silencing anybody. The fact that we have forum today shows that we are willing to listen to anybody. Huh? In fact, we are not only... We allow even our friend to make noise. The AP making noise, PKR making noise. We are for democracy, uh, uh, freedom of speech. We are not going to punish you because you voice out your objections. Uh, because we believe that everybody is entitled to their opinions. Uh, because in democracy, you have to tolerate a good opinion as a lousy opinion. Even a lousy opinion, you have to tolerate. That's what democracy is all about. Am I right? I'm not saying that his, his, his opinion is lousy. Yeah? I'm, I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm just quoting what the, ju the learned judge in Indian, what Indian case said. In democracy, you are not supposed to sing the same song. We are not here to making a judgment to anybody. He's entitled to judgment. I respect his opinions. At the same time also, I hope right, he also has to respect the opinions of others. So when he says that, Okay, there's no punishment for a letter in Quran. Yeah, I agree. There are opinions on that. But there are also opinions saying that there is a clear injunction from Islamic perspective about the obligation to implement hudud to married couple adultery. Because Muslim, we are, don't only believe in Quran, we also believe in hadith. In Sunnah, these are two primary sources of Islam, of Islamic law. So a Muslim, if you are really truly, if you are really a true Muslim, you cannot only accept one source of, of guidance, that's Quran. Because Muslim believe that even the Prophet's traditions, either his speech or his behavior or his tacit approval is considered a source of Quran. So I fully agree. You cannot find eh, the injunction of imposing uh, stoning to death in Quran because that very verse has been abrogated, was abrogated. But if you study the science of Quran, there are, we call it Nasakh wa Mansukh. Eh? This is the science of Quran which you need to study. You cannot just jump to conclusion, oh, because of this, 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 this verse has been abrogated, that means this punishment shouldn't be imposed. No, this, I wish is that, that uh, we can just reduce into that uh, simplicity. But it's not like that. So if you really want to argue, you must argue also using the, the right discipline. You must know Arabic, you must know the, the science of Quran. Just for instance, I give you an example. Eh? The fact that the, the, in there's, there's a precedent, the Prophet allow stoning to death to, we call it two, uh, two, two clear cases. They call it Gawamidiyah and Ma'is. Uh, even if you study the, the Quranic, uh, the, 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 the Islamic law, it's not easy. In fact, when first person came to Prophet uh, confessing that he committed adultery, First time he, he made a prophet, prophet said, go back. If you commit a tree eh, without any witness, any, any eyewitness, why you should reveal to the people? Islam, respect your privacy. The fact now the people go to the hotel and knock down, I believe it's, not, it's nothing to do with Islam. It's something, it's a human invention. I'm sorry. I beg to differ with the the Amnos version of Islam. Huh? I believe that so long as you commit that tree in your house, nobody watching it, nobody going to interfere your rights. That's your privacy. We are going to respect that. 
as I respect the Christian to use the word Allah huh? in uh, Al-Kitab. In fact, I'm the one who wrote article in Malaysia Kini. I said, the right to use the word Allah is guaranteed in the Constitution. I respect it. In fact, my article was was adopted by, but was quoted in the Lim Lim uh, Lim Kishan's blog. And when I wrote that article, many non-Muslims say this is a liberal Muslim, progressive Muslim. But when I write an article, I wrote an article. Who do law? Let us agree to disagree. This is fanatic Muslim. This is a, you see. I don't know. I'm the one who said that Vivian and Alvin shouldn't be charged under Sedition Act. The fact that they apologize, we Muslims, we have to accept that this is draconian law. So we, I hope, eh, you also give some leeways to us. Eh? Okay, it's okay. <laughs> he said uh, he, he, he didn't hear something new from me. In the same vein, I also didn't hear anything new from him. <laughs> When he said apostasy is not, it's not in the Quran. This is Mahadis view. I have been listening to the Mahadis views on Hudud for so long. It's sick to my to my ear, but I have to listen because in, in politics, in democracy, we have to hear that argument. So there are always opinion. You cannot draft a perfect law. In order to develop the law, there must be a law first. Let let, let if you say that okay. If you say that this law starting to death is an Islamic, okay, let's have a case first. Let the court decide. In fact, in Pakistan, there are many laws which have been held by the court is against the injunction of Islam, even the Hudu law. That's how law they believe. That's why we have court of law to, 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 to determine whether that law is really Islamic or not, or is constitutional or not. So the problem is you are making prejudgment. You make a judgment based on what happened in Pakistan, what happened to East. Is it is it fair? When Kelantan hasn't implemented it, you suddenly you make a pass a judgment. This is very premature. So what else? Okay, he said that. Uh, Dr. Tariq Ramadan says we should have moratorium on Hudud law. I have to declare here, personally, I also hold the same view. But he says moratorium. He doesn't say abandonment. Moratorium in Arabic is tawakuf. That means you can stop it until and unless all the prerequisites are met. It's okay. Is entitled to that opinion. There are also some opinions against the opinion. That's why I believe that until and unless a perfect Islamic governance, a good policy prevail, the implementation of Hudud going to be going to face a lot of hurdles. This is my belief. But at the same time, I'm talking from democratic rights of the Klantanis. We sell the product of Hudud to the Klantanis. They accepted. For 23 years, we have been selling this. They accepted. When you talk about democracy, you talk, as like, like I pointed a lot, this is about democracy. When the people of Klantanis agree to our agenda, how can you pass a judgment this is undemocratic? Of course, I agree. We, 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 okay. But I, I come to what Brother Shah Johan said. The, uh, the, Shah Johan, eh? Shah Jihan. <laughs> so sorry, but that is that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so he raised about many issues on the continent. Huh? This, yeah, I, this, uh, in fact, that's nothing new because I've been reading about uh, the Mali Imtiaz article on this. In fact, when Mali Imtiaz and his friends uh, represented uh, Zaid Johan, eh, no, not Zaid Johan. Uh, who is the eh? Zaid, Zaid? Zaid Ibrahim. <laughs> you know Zaid Ibrahim, Zaid Kamarudin. Zaid Ibrahim eh, challenged the Hudud law in Trangano. The matter went to federal court. So I, 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 I was one of the uh, lawyers uh, who represented the state government at that time. 
right? So that's that's the argument put forward by 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 Malik Imtiaz and his friends. We respect. He said that crime should fall under federal. But we are talking about constitution. Constitution is a living document. It cannot be interpreted rigidly. So if you read 9 schedule, it starts for the word, the state jurisdiction includes Islamic law. Islamic law. Then you read Article 70, 74, sub-Article 4, what do you say? Eh? It's my, my, my notes. Okay. Article 74, sub-Article 4 says, where general as well as specific expressions are used in describing any of matters enumerated in the list set off in ninth schedule, the generality of the former shall not be taken to be littered by the letter. If you don't understand, it's okay, because after all, you are not lawyers. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sometimes it's, it's quite legalistic. Okay, in other words, they say that if the word in ninth schedule, Islamic law, for instance, is a general word. In interpreting the word Islamic law, you are not bound by what they call it as judem, judem generis principle. In other words, these general words shouldn't be interpreted, shouldn't be taken to be limited. The fact after the word Islamic law, it enlisted eh? uh, marriage, divorce. So my learned friend says that so Islamic law should be interpreted comprising all of personal law. We are not talking here about ordinary legislation. We are talking about constitution. The beauty of written constitution in Malaysia is that in order to interpret constitution, we are not bound by the judicial precedent. The principle of state decisis doesn't apply to constitution. Constitution is sui juris, sui juris. It stands on its own. Even we have a federal court decided this is the meaning of, for instance, certain word. The elected court, even the, the lower court, is not bound by the decision of the highest court. This is the principle of interpreting the constitution. So, we have different views. One says that Hunut law is unconstitutional. We also are of the view that Hunut law is not unconstitutional. So, who is going to determine ultimately? It's going to be the court. Only the federal court has the right to determine whether such a law Huh? within the legislative con competency of the state. So until and unless the court decide, no one can claim that his opinion is right. So when we have two opinions, one say is unconstitutional, one say is not constitutional. One say is constitutional, one say is not constitutional. We should respect, we should leave it as it is. So if Lantan view that that law is not constitutional, let the Lantan be given a right to implement it. If you feel that it's unconstitutional, challenge it. By all means, go ahead. Even DAP, even Gerakan, even my friend, uh, Sharazan, want to, to implement it. Because after all, he's not belong to any political party. He doesn't have to worry. He also doesn't have to worry because he, he is not answerable to the punya pengikut. If he have followers lah. Eh? But you you can challenge it. But to say that it's unconstitutional, so you can implement it. For me, it's cruel. Because you are already saying that only my opinion is true. So I believe that that's why as regard to the private members bill, we haven't, even though Kelantan has already decided, but we still eh, in the process of uh, this, uh, in the process of discussion. Eh? Okay, the the what do you call it? My learned friend says that criminal law belongs to the federal jurisdiction. Yeah, if we look at the federal list, it's clearly stated there. But we are not talking even education. When you say education, 
you're also talking about matters fall under the Federalist. When you say about banking, it's also fall under the Federalist. But we are not saying criminal law per se. When we say education, yeah, perfectly within the jurisdiction of the state, of the federal. But how about when we say Islamic school? Does it fall under school or it fall under Islam? So the same issue was canvassed in the federal court decision in Muhammad bin Daud versus public prosecutor. Now I give authority. I give also uh, evidence. Evidence not only, only, only uh, numbers. Huh? You don't reduce evidence evidence on numbers. This is also evidence. This is also authority. Muhammad bin Daud says that in what happened in the state government of Terengganu, in what do you call it? A pass a law. I don't know. The federal, uh, the federal government passed a law introducing section 298A of the penal code. Which is a crime for causing disunity using religion, religion of Islam. So the law was challenged. Who was the counsel for state of Terengganu? You know, for, for Muhammad bin Daud. And a person who challenged that law as unconstitutional. Who was the lawyer appearing in federal court? It's Gopal Sri Ram who challenged it and said that Section 290A was dealing with Islam, not dealing with public order. So the government, the federal government, when he when he enacted the law, he said that we are dealing with public order. So it's within the purview of the federal jurisdiction. But Gopas himself said, no, in peak and substance, the law deal with Islam. So the federal court total by majority three of Five, uh, out of five, agreed with the interpretation by Gopal Sri Ram and decided that the law was unconstitutional. Oh, that's not me. So my point is that we are not going to silence anybody. We are not going to use ISA for hudud. No. You, <laughs> Dr. Faro, it's okay for you to have different opinions. I respect that. But we also have to be consistent. We must also condemn all the Korean laws in Malaysia. Shh. Cloud and clear. Don't only loud and clear when it comes to hudud law. Go to the public, say that PCA is so un Islamic. I want to hear the voice from you. Where is your voice on PCA? When we re establish the, the, the law of detention without trial, the rebirth of law detention without trial in PCA, we fight to the nail in parliament until 1 a.m. I debated almost two hours. I quoted Islamic principle of on justice, on equality. Don't, don't say that just because we will introduce as if that we are tolerating all unjust law. No. When I said Norway, I said, I don't say, oh, of course, they are not going to be able to do it. They are different standard. My point is that, unfortunately, I have to explain to him, Norway, I just give example. Can you point of order? Huh? Will we be getting to QAA at any time soon? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. This is another, Aris also, why you know, always have different why you with him. It's okay. Uh, in fact, I also, I also respect his, his opinion. It's okay. Uh, so my, my 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 view is that we have to consistent. If we say Hudu law is is Islamic, even you say un-Islamic, I will respect your opinion. But at the same time, you also have to respect those who say that we Muslim. If you say about equality before the law, uh, Article Eight, yeah, you may argue that it's it's again Article. So the Muslim also can argue when you implement the penal code against the Muslim, where Muslim has his own penal code, it's also against Article 8. So they, 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 you can always view it from, from, from different angle. That, that's the beauty of our constitution. My friend said, when you implement hudud, 
there going to be a change of character of the constitution. And he said, in his view, the constitution is secular. I beg to differ. Our constitution is neither Islamic nor secular. We are different from India. In India, the preamble of the constitution clearly states this is a secular constitution. So that's the basic character of constitution. That's why you cannot change that character. I beg to differ. They are saying that you cannot change this constitution, become the communist. We can. Of course, if we have two third majority. Abia. Okay, sorry. Eh? So, sorry. I hope. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Wendy.